I'm Mike Gleason, and welcome as ESPN Classic presents the 1998 matchup between the Chicago Cubs and the Houston Astros, featuring Kerry Wood's 20 strikeout performance. The Cubs knew that the flamethrowing right-hander had plenty of potential, but as the 98 season approached, the question was, is Wood ready for the big leagues? The Chicago pitching staff was filled with crafty veterans, but hardly an intimidating group, as Dave Campbell explains in his Vintage Sports Center report from 1998. Kevin Tappany figures to be the ace of the staff since no marquee pitchers were added in the offseason. His seven consecutive wins to end the year impressed the Cubs. Mark Clark, acquired in the same trade that brought Lance Johnson to Chicago, is the number two starter after going 6-1 and one with a 2.86 ERA in nine Cubs starts. Steve Traxel followed an all-star 96 season by struggling last year, allowing a league-high 32 home runs. Lefty Terry Mulholland battles Kevin Foster for the fifth spot, while baseball's top pitching prospect, Kerry Wood, could make an impact if he learns to solve control problems with his overpowering fastball. Pardon me if you've heard all of this before. No pennant in 52 years, no World Championship since 1908, and only four winning seasons in the last 25 years. But hey, it is spring training, and the National League Central has six teams with no clear-cut favorite. And let's face it, the Cubs are due. From Mesa, Arizona, Dave Campbell, ESPN. Wood began the season in AAA, but less than two weeks later was called up to Chicago when reliever Bob Patterson was injured. Later, we'll preview the rest of the 1998 Cubs, but right now we present Kerry Wood's 20 strikeout performance against the Astros, May 6, 1998, on ESPN Classic. Another beautiful day for baseball here at the friendly confines. 64 degrees, a light breeze out of the southeast at 7 miles per hour. As today, the Cubs and Astros wrap up this brief two-game series. Houston leading the Central Division with a record of 20 and 11. Here is Larry Durker's starting lineup with the Killer Bees atop the order. Biggio, Bell, and Bagwell, the top three. Bell leads the National League with a 4.03 batting average. The heart of the order has Jack Howell at third. Moise Salu in center. Former Cub Dave Clark is in left hitting sixth. Gutierrez the shortstop, Osmus the catcher, Shane Reynolds the pitcher, Will bat night for the front running Astros. And the Pepsi defense for Jim Riggleman and the Cubs. It's Rodriguez, Brown, and Sosa left to right in the infield. Kevin Ory, Lauser, Morandini, and Grace. And a battery of Sandy Martinez and young Kerry Wood going to the mound in search of his third victory. You look at the ERA way up there at 589, but when he's been good, he's been very good as the 25 strikeouts in 18 and a third innings would attest. And obviously the key is stopping the killer bees atop the order and especially their leadoff man Craig Biggio who is just a marvelous ball player and earlier today we talked to Tom McCraw of the Astros about what Craig Biggio means to this Astro attack. Number one is he's a gamer. I mean he comes to play every day. Uh, he knows the things to do to get on base. If we need a base runner, and he's trying to, you know, get that walk, or he'll team take a get hit with a pitch ball to get on base. We need that ball to go to the right side. He'll go to the right side with it, and he has the capability which most leadoff hitters don't have, is he can lead the ballpark for you in a tight ball game, and, and he loves to be in that tight situation. That guy is tough. They may have two of the toughest guys in baseball on this Astro team: Biggio one, Bagwell the other, Jerry Meals, the home plate umpire. He may be a key man in this ball game for Kerry Wood. You talked about that a bit last night. Well, I think it really depends on just exactly what strike zone Kerry Wood is going to get. If he gets the same strike zone Wally Bell was calling last night, he's going to be pretty tough to beat. I'm thinking that Greg Biggio is going to try to stand in the way of one of those inside curveballs today. And he has a very well padded left elbow. He's only been hit twice this year, but year after year, he's hit over 20 times. And look for him to be on base early in this one. He went one for five last night with a late home run and the first pitch sails inside one ball no strikes and knocked the mask right off the head of Jerry Meals as he's probably encouraging Sandy Martinez to get a glove on it. Watch it again. Sandy wow. just misses it. <laughs> that is some heat folks and Biggio uh, rather carefully steps back in. And it's 2-0. and oh. Well, Biggio is going to try to take a walk. He's going to get on base any way he can. And you notice those are just fake bunts. He's going to force Kerry Wood to throw strikes. And that, of course, 
what you wait to see from this very talented young man he's got the 98 mile an hour heat but can he get it over two balls and a strike to Biggio who's hitting a hefty 315 with three home runs and 13 batted in and he leads the National League in stolen bases with 14 and 16 tries two and two the wind not much of a factor today it's out of the southeast at seven miles an hour 64 degrees at game time and if the rain does hold off it'll be very pleasant at the friendly confines today two balls two strikes got him with the heat that ball was really sizzling one down Biggio swung when that ball was in the glove you watch it here and Biggio swinging way late and that's one of the worst swings you'll see him take. At least he can't tell anybody on the bench how that curveball is because he didn't see one. <laughs> yeah, right. And here's Derek Bell the leading hitter in the National League with a 403 average six home runs 28 batted in Bell had a tough time early in the game last night against Mark Clark but then had an RBI single in the seventh inning for the Astros and reached on the double error by Morandini in the eighth. No balls and a strike to Mr. Bell who already has 50 hits on the year but is down two strikes. Well so far so good and so far these Astros have to be pretty impressed with what they've seen. That was the first breaking ball and it was a dandy. Nothing in two. Right back to the screen. One thing I know Jim Riggleman would love to see from Kerry Wood today is another seven inning performance like he gave the ball club last time out against the Cardinals. This cup bullpen has worked a lot lately. And you know the question about Kerry is going to be the high pitch count as the day continues and he changes speeds and Bell strikes out. Oh my goodness. Two up two down. Well he's got two different kinds of curveballs and that was one that came in a little slower than the last one. And watch Bell swing over the top of this. From the Southwest Plainview camera, take a look at a good hitter looking real bad. Big slow curveball gets Bell. Two up, two down, and here's Bagwell. This is a man that can turn around the best fastball. So a fun challenge here for him. And a strike, and the kid is really pumping him over with ease right now. Against the Cardinals, carry through 104 pitches. And that got him through seven. We'd love another one of those kinds of outings again today. One and one to Bagwell. He laid off. It's two and one. Well, now odds are Bagwell's going to see a fastball, and he's been pulling off the ball. So if you're Kerry Wood, you'd like to keep it on the outer third. Keep it out away from Bags. Ooh. Just some tremendous heat with a little hop at the end and he just threw it right by him. Two balls two strikes the Astros just shaking their heads right now. The gunslinger ready the 2 2 strike three call. He punched out the order in the first nothing doing for the Astros here come the Cubs in the bottom half of the first. You're watching National League Rookie of the Year, Kerry Wood, and his record-setting 20-strikeout performance from 1998 on ESPN+. Kerry Wood struck out the Astros in order in the first. Here come the Cubs and the Pepsi lineup. The Cubs a game over 500, fourth in the National League Central with Brant Brown, Mickey Morandini, and Sammy Sosa, the top three. Sosa with a 12-game hit streak. Mark Grace, the Cubs cleanup man, has a nine-game hitting streak and has fared well against Reynolds. Then it's Henry Rodriguez, Jeff Blauser, Sandy Martinez, the catcher, Kevin Ory back in the lineup, and Kerry Wood, the pitcher, will bat ninth. And the defense for Larry Durker in the Houston Astros. Clark, Alou, and Bell left to right in the infield. The venerable Jack Howell, Gutierrez, Biggio, and Bagwell, Brad Osmus behind the plate, and Shane Reynolds on the hill. As you see a two and two record on for his eighth start the ERA up there this year uncharacteristically giving up eleven and a half hits per nine innings and he's always had trouble in this ballpark and the Cubs are hoping that continues because the way Kerry Wood is throwing 
they don't need too many runs today. So Reynolds against Brown to open up the Cubs half of the first inning. Brandt last night went one for four at eight. Three run homer. That the wind didn't help at all. He's got such tremendous power. Yes. That Those burly wrists. Had no problems hitting that ball out of the park. And Reynolds evens the count at a ball and a strike. Reynolds, Reynolds is, he's worked sharpening up his curveball and his slider, and we should see a few more of those. Last year it was basically fastball and forkball. Fisted out of play, one and two. Reynolds last year just nine and ten. The ERA up there at 423. Only completed two of his 30 starts. He was hurt, had some. Arthroscopic surgery to repair the meniscus in his right knee had a cyst removed as well. But he's back to start the year. He started the last three opening days for the Astro team. So he's their top gun, and he tries to lead the Astros to a sweep today here at Wrigley Field. Two balls, two strikes to the Cubs leadoff man, Brett Brown. Got him with an off speed pitch. So strikeouts the story so far. Four batters have struck out in the first inning and a third. Well, when you consider that this Houston team has lost 60% of their starting rotation from last year, as you look at that split finger for strike three, you have to realize Larry Durker has his hands full. He lost his number one starter in Daryl Kyle. You got Ramon Garcia hurt. You got Chris Holt hurt. Right. So that's 60%. Mickey Morandini fouls it back, but then you add in Mike Campton. He's won five games. Lima's won five games, somewhat surprisingly. They lead the National League in wins with those two men. And you know Reynolds is going to rebound, or at least you hope he will. Well, you figure Hampton was there because he had a good year last year. I think the surprise is Lima, who moved from a one and six bullpen man to a five and one starter. Morandini evens the count of ball and a strike. 0 for 4 last night. And a beautiful look at the friendly confines from our high center field scoreboard. Good sized crowd gathering here at the ballpark. One and two. Reynolds, a good sized right hander at 6'3, 210 pounds. He tried to check his swing and could not, says Jerry Meals. Morandini can't believe that call. Nor can the Cubs bench. I thought he checked his swing from up here, but he is struck out. Jim Ringelman coming out, and he says, you can't be calling that. But Jerry Meals is saying, I can and I will, and I did. I think all Jim wants is for him to ask for a little help on that play. Because I don't think he went around. Well, we've had five hitters and five strikeouts and watch Morandini as he takes one up and in. He never swung. In fact he just pivoted and from the Southwest Airlines plane view camera will take a look at just a pivot with the front foot and he kept his hands back and still got rung up. So a tough break for him and now Sosa takes a strike. Sammy a 12 game hit streak. He's hit four home runs. He's knocked in nine during this career high spurt for him and he's climbed into the top ten in the National League hit parade. He's hitting 352. But he's behind two quick strikes. Well, that split finger has always been an outstanding pitch, and we interchangeably use split finger and fork ball. It's pretty much the same pitch. And Shane Reynolds has always had that. He's always had better luck in the dome because I don't think you pick it up as well as you do outside. And this park has always been a mystery to him. Picture perfect day for baseball at Wrigley. Now time called as Sammy steps back out. Well, this will be a test for Sammy and a test of his patience because for one of the few times he's down 0 2. Let's see if he has a patience when a veteran pitcher nips at one of the corners. The 0 2. He spit that one low. One ball, two strikes. During this 12 game hit streak, Sosa has struck out only seven times. He's walked seven times as well. So he's been much, much more patient and consequentially much more effective. But that time he went fishing and six hitters up. 
Six hitter hitters down on strikes. After one inning at Wrigley Field, we are scoreless. You're watching National League Rookie of the Year, Kerry Wood, and his record-setting 20 strikeout performance from 1998 on ESPN Classic. Six strikeouts by these two teams after one inning of play, and on to the second we go. For the Astros, Howell, Alou, and Clark will take a look at young right-hander Kerry Wood. Jack Howell's a man who had a pretty good career here in the States. Went to Japan for four years with both the Ukult Swallows and the Giants, Yomiuri, Tokyo Giants, and did what a nice job. And then now is back and resurrected his career again. Now that's got to be a swing. Now he appeals and it's not. That's not right. One ball, no strikes to Howell. Howell at one point came very close to winning the Triple Crown. He was the MVP in Japan. Had a good cut. Well, in his four years overseas, hit 100 home runs, knocked in 272. And he said he really enjoyed his time over there. And does not regret for one instant his four years involved in Japanese baseball. Got a chance to face. Hideki Arabu in spring training. And he told me that when he read all the reports that the Yankees had signed the Japanese Nolan Ryan, he said he was wondering who they signed because it wasn't the guy that he faced in spring training. He said he was a decent pitcher, but not Nolan Ryan esque. Well, he's seeing a guy right now with Nolan Ryan type Pete. One and two from Kerry Wood. Got him swinging. He struck out the first four he's faced. I'm not sure what the record is. I think I recall Tom Seaver striking out eight straight men. I think Roger Clemens did that also. And there's some high heat. And sayonara to Mr. Howell. And Ohio Gazayamas to Moise Salu, which I think means good morning or good day. <laughs> Haven't brushed up on my Japanese of late, though. Here's Alu. Breaking ball, outside corner, strike one. Moise is hitting 305, seven home runs, 28 runs batted in. Oh, and two. Well, that's what that real sharp breaking curve will do to a right hand hitter because he can't tell it's a curveball. He's thinking fastball starts his swing and then the ball disappears and you look rather foolish. Smart pitch there testing that outside edge from Jerry Meals but he missed with it. A ball two strikes. Got him. That was a great pitch because Sandy Martinez called the fastball and you saw him take the glove in motion. I want it upstairs. Nobody's going to hit his fastball upstairs. If you swing at it, you're going down. And you see the high heat rising. And yet another strikeout, five in a row. But now a different challenge. A left-hand hitter faces him, Dave Clark. He's hitting 125, no homers or ribbies. Five up, five strikeouts. Against the Cubs right-hander, Kerry Wood. One ball, no strikes. Well, usually you'll see one of the guys lay down a bunt, but I don't think that guy is going to be Dave Clark. <laughs> the 1-0. Swung on high, fly ball into center. It's playable for Brett Brown. He's got it, and that retires the side. Six up, six down after one and a half. Scoreless at the friendly confines. After starting the 1997 season with 14 straight losses, Chicago finished last in the National League Central with a dismal 68-94 record, the team's worst mark in 17 seasons. Considering the Cubbies hadn't won a World Series since Teddy Roosevelt was president, the only place to go was up, as Dave Campbell explains in his Minute Sports Center report from 1998. It's professional baseball, and uh, it, it's it's a game, but it's also a business, and uh, your, your business is to go out there and win. So I know I feel an urgency to win, and I'm looking forward to it as an opportunity. Longtime Braves shortstop Jeff Blauser signed as a free agent after his best offensive season ever, while former Philly second baseman Mickey Morandini replaces retired Ryan Sandberg at second. 
The new DP combination makes it clear they want to shake things up. You always hear about the Cubs and they just can't win. Well, I think uh, at, at a certain point, you probably get saturated with a lot of negative thoughts, and I think collectively uh, the guys in that clubhouse are going to have to fight that and fight our way out of it. It's time to go out and win. The fans, uh, well, the short time I've been here, I went to the Cubs convention, and that's all the fans talked about is how they've been fans for 50 and 60 years and been through all these tough times. I think it's time to go out and win and win for the fans and uh, bring some excitement to the city. The most important newcomer in terms of offensive production figures to be former Expos outfielder Henry Rodriguez. The Cubs were dismal in both runs scored and home runs in 97, and Rodriguez is expected to improve that. Rodriguez also should become the Cubs' 13th different opening day left fielder in the past 13 years. Speaking of 13, Sammy Sosa was the only Cub with more than 13 homers last year. While Sosa and Rodriguez combined to hit 62 long balls in 97, they also combined for 323 strikeouts. Get ready for a lot of Windy City jokes. Lance Johnson will lead off and play center. Mark Grace switches to the cleanup spot. He was sixth in the National League in hitting, the eighth time Grace has been in the top ten the past ten years. We'll Last year, no team in baseball night. blew more Becker leads after eight innings than left. the Cubs. And our former Giants closer, Rod Beck, who played a major role in helping the Giants go from worst to first. Heading into this game with Houston on May 6th, the Cubs already had 16 wins. In 1997, Chicago had won 16 until May 21st. Later, we'll profile Kerry Wood's Rookie of the Year season. Right now, let's continue his 20 strikeout performance against the Astros from 1998 on ESPN Classic. Mark Grace will lead it off for the Cubs here in the second scoreless duel. At Wrigley Field, the Cubs trying to get a game back from the front-running Astros. Cubs at 16 and 15. We're four games back. The Reds a game behind us, and we trail the Cardinals by a game. St. Louis still struggling away from home. But Mark Grace hasn't been struggling of late. He's got a nine-game hitting streak. And Reynolds ready to go. Toward third. Under the glove of Hound in the left field. And they give him a base hit. He's trying for two to throw. Terrible. And into the Houston bullpen. And Grace all the way to third. A double and an error. And the error to the Astro left fielder, Dave Clark. Well, Howell lets this one play him. And then Dave Clark has some problems as Mark Grace decides to test the arm of Dave Clark and the throw is Aaron. So there is the go ahead run just 90 feet away. The way Kerry Wood is throwing one run becomes very important. So fly ball could tally the first run of the afternoon as Henry stands in one ball no strikes. Astros are going to concede the run on a ground ball in the infield. Trying to stay out of the beginning. They've got the infield back. So Henry needs some contact. He's hitting 240 with eight homers, 20 batted in. And a good block by Osmus. Two balls, no strikes. Reynolds already has one wild pitch, and that one bounced about three feet in front of home plate. Osmus did a nice job of blocking it. Henry has struggled with the bat of late, but a chance to pick up a ribby here. It's 3 0 oh now. He's four for his last 41. The 3 0. -oh. Three and one. Well, it looks like Reynolds is going to stay away from Henry, so he's got to look away, and he just whacked Brad Osmus right in the mask on his follow through with his swing. Osmus is laughing. You don't think we can get a catcher's interference on that? No, he got a face burger for his efforts. The three one to the right side, but foul. And count now: three balls, two strikes. Jeff Blauser, the Cubs shortstop, waiting on deck. Cubs trying to break on top here in the 
early going against the first place Astros. We've led the last two games and we haven't been able to hold it the last two days. The 3-2. High drive right center field. That's deep enough to score the run. Moises Alou will haul it in. Tagging from third is Grace. It's an RBI sack fly for Henry, and the Cubs lead it one to nothing. That's a first sacrifice fly for Henry. And that's the ninth for the Cubs this year, and RBI number 21. And the Cubs have the lead. Well, that's one thing Kerry Wood has had the benefit of, Steve. He has gotten pretty good run support for this Cub team all season long. Two starts ago, the Cubs put a, a huge number on the board against the Dodgers in Hideo Nomo. They scored three against the Cardinals in the first in his last start. They've given him a one-run lead here in the second so far today at Wrigley Field. I think this team is starting to feel very comfortable when Kerry goes to the mound. And they just play a lot looser. Blouser chops it to third. Howell will make the play with ease. And there are two down. So two outs. And Sandy Martinez, the cup catcher, will take his first shots at Shane Reynolds. It looks like Kerry Wood has solved the problem of the Astros running game. You just don't allow anybody to get on. You don't have to worry about the stolen base. And it doesn't matter who's catching, whether it's Sandy Martinez or anybody else. Well, that noted baseball philosopher, my dad, told me many, many years ago, you can't steal first. And they're having a hard time making contact against the young fireballer. That's out of the zone. 2-0 to the Cub catcher, Sandy Martinez. Playing in his sixth game this year, he's had but six at bats. And he shows good patience, 3 0. This guy has a great arm behind the plate. Does Sandy. And we'll see if he has a chance to display it. He draws the two out walk. Jeff Penlin has been working hard with Kevin Ory, and here's an opportunity for Kevin to try to break out of it. Now, they've opened him up somewhat. Obviously, everybody around the league knows that Kevin has had some problems getting the ball out of his kitchen, getting around on the ball inside, and there's a look at Jeff Penlin, who suggested to Kevin that he open up that front foot slightly so that his hips can clear and he can get his hands through. For he has been jammed a lot, and that's where Reynolds starts him inside. Nothing in one. The depths of Kevin Slump, he's four for his last 46, and has hit the ball out of the infield only 14 times during that stretch. So he has really hit a, a tough spot. One ball, one strike. His average down to 185, his last home run April 1st. But maybe today's the day he's going to bust out of it against the first place Houston ball club. Sandy a short lead over at first not going and Kevin swung a little early. It looked like the split finger and that one just dropped out of the zone. Cubs and Cardinal fans in attendance today. Yeah, how they get seated together. The one, two, just missed. It's two and two. Speaking of the Cardinals, they'll be in Pittsburgh tonight. We'll look at the Giants starting tomorrow. They play the Marlins tonight down in South Florida. The two, two, swing, animus, and Ori strikes out, and that retires the Cubs in the second. One run, one hit, one error, one left. After two. Cubs have a one nothing lead. You're watching National League Rookie of the Year, Kerry Wood, and his record-setting 20 strikeout performance from 1998 on ESPN Classic. An unearned run, the difference so far. The Cubs lead it one to nothing. We want to pass along a lot of birthday greetings today. Harry Steinberg used to work at Wrigley Field way back in the 20s. He celebrates 89th birthday today. Happy birthday as well to Susan Crown. Joe Andrade, 77 today, his grandson Jim at the ballpark, wanted to pass that along. And happy 54th wedding anniversary to Jimmy Farrell and his wife Eleanor. Jimmy, the umpire's room attendant here at the ballpark. 
Ricky Gutierrez will lead off the Astro third. And he finally makes contact and fouls it into the upper deck. Well, he was one of the culprits from last night as Mark Clark chose to pitch to him, and twice he burned him with a single and a double, and two runs batted in. He's hitting a hefty 352 on the year, but he's by two strikes right now. Mr. Woods' fastball is a mere illusion. They have not been able to hit him. Let's throw one upstairs higher than high, and you'll probably get him. He tried, but the shortstop laid off. Big group here from Drake University in Des Moines, headed up by Jim and Ruth Mills and Hans and Sonia Hansen. One and two. He stays alive. Pitch count often key with a power pitcher like Wood. He threw 24 through two innings. And again, the Cubs would love a nice long outing for it to the left side off Ori's glove into left field for a base hit. Well that was the first breaking ball that hung up there slightly and Gutierrez who has been red hot gets the first hit of the day only the second man to make contact against Kerry Wood. And the one thing that you worry about with Kerry who doesn't use a slide step is base runners and watch it again as Ori goes to his left as it just tip off the glove and no chance to make a play so Gutierrez who runs fairly well and will run often. Probably getting a lead at first and he's three out of six in stolen bases. And Brad Osmus who had been slumping until he got to town is the hitter. And a strike call. Osmus hitting 161 with two homers seven runs batted in. One of those homers came last night. Gutierrez measures that lead. He's got a good one. Not going. And the pitch popped foul and out of play. The Astros lead the National League by far with 44 stolen bases. As Larry Durker has said, we also get thrown out quite a bit. They've been gunned down 21 times, but he says you put the pressure on the defense if you run. And you leave it up to the pitcher and catcher to both make pretty good plays to get you out. Not going the pitch is way high. One and two. Power pitchers sometimes take a long time to get the ball to home plate. But Woods got such great velocity and Martinez behind the plate with his great arm. Will that be enough to be the equalizer. We'll see. Now it's two and two. Well there's no doubt that Sandy Martinez is the best throwing of the Cub catchers. He's got a quick release. He's normally very accurate. Two balls two strikes. And now time is called by the Astro catcher. You don't want to even talk to Kerry Wood right now about a slide step or any alteration to his motion. You just want him to throw strikes and the rest will come later. Again. Into foul ground and over the top. Hopefully that's not headed toward Mr. Santos car again. Looked to me like Sandy was ready to try a pickoff play at first base if that one would have gone by Osmus. Gutierrez was straying somewhat on the secondary lead. Not going the 2 2 is high three balls two strikes first one of those. Mr. Wood has faced in this ball game today. Well this is important if you don't get Osmus then you set up the automatic bunt and put runners at second and third for BGO if Reynolds is successful. So you want to throw a strike here. Three and two got him swinging snap throw to first. But Gutierrez back standing. Osmus asks was it a strike. Jerry Meal says yes it would have been had you not swung and Kerry Wood with six strikeouts already in the game. Throws that fastball out away from Osmus. No chance here. And Sandy Martinez to tries to pick off Gutierrez. And now the bunt situation. But it's tough to bunt this young man. That fastball very lively. You'll see a lot of pop ups on bunts with Kerry Wood throwing. Reynolds hitting 133 on the year. Squares lays down a dandy. Who wants it? Grace does. And he'll throw to first on the sacrifice. So Gutierrez to second. And a sacrifice scored three four now two outs. 
take a look at a cornucopia of strikeouts. There's a fastball and a great hook and some more heat and a little more heat and yet another fastball. So Kerry Wood has everything well intact but now you're facing a man for the second time and a quality hitter. And Biggio in these situations loves to go to right and right center and pick up RBIs. Good speed in the box, good speed on the bases for the Astros who look to tie the game in the third. One on, two outs, one nothing Cubs. Think, one and oh. Think about 81 runs batted in last year for a leadoff hitter. Biggio hit 309, 22 home runs, stole 47 bases. And scored 146 runs himself. It's a balk. A balk on Wood. Well, Kerry Wood, for the second time this year, has balked. And he did it because Jeff Blauser broke in back of Gutierrez at second. Kerry flinched. And he knows exactly what he did. So when Sandy went out to talk with him, he says, I understand what I did. Let's go get BGO. Watch it again. And you see he's mad at himself. Just a little bit of a bobble. Now in Los Angeles, that balk really unnerved the young man. He works off the windup now and a quick strike to even the count one and one. There's Phil Regan, the pitching coach, has to like what he's seen so far. Runner at third, two outs. To the shortstop, easy play there. And the Cubs out of the inning. No runs, one hit. No errors, one left. After two and a half, Kerry Wood and the Cubs lead the Astros one to nothing. You're watching National League Rookie of the Year, Kerry Wood, and his record-setting 20 strikeout performance from 1998 on ESPN Classic. We go to the fourth. One nothing. Cubs have the lead. The two, three, four spot due up for Houston here in the fourth inning. That's Bell Bagwell and Jack Howell. Derek Bell came up with the Toronto Blue Jays, and while a member of the Blue Jays, Dave Winfield and Joe Carter decided to play a little trick on him. So they got the keys to his truck and drove it on to the field at the brand new stadium there in Toronto. And? And they had the public address announcer announce that as part of Fan Appreciation Weekend, they were going to raffle off Derek Bell's truck. <laughs> and here was a young guy not making any money and he saw his truck on the field and his face like dropped to the dugout floor. Well they thought he was going to run out after the truck as they were driving around and around so they finally had to tell him that it was just a joke. They weren't going to raffle off the I only truck that he ever had. Then he started laughing was very happy when he found out that he would be able to indeed keep his own truck. The one one to him popped up. And into the seats, and Kerry's got him set up for another strikeout. It's one and two. He's a different hitter now than when he was with the Toronto Ball Club and later with San Diego, much more confident. Says he loves to hit in the two spot. In the four spot, he just didn't feel like he could contribute. He's not really a power hitter, and he felt there was a lot of pressure on him there. So he loves hitting in between Biggio and Bagwell, and certainly his numbers look like it. Two and two. Bell leading the National League in hitting with a 403 average. He has the fifth most runs batted in with 28. And he's hit six home runs. He serves that ball into right, and Sammy's got a beat on it. And there's out number one. Base is empty, one out for Jeff Bagwell. It's been 68 at bats since. The Astro first baseman has hit a home run. He's hitting 248 on the year with four homers, 15 batted in. Not Jeff Bagwell like numbers, but you know by season's end, he's going to be right up there at the 30 home run, 100 RBI tally, and he was right on that fastball. Nothing in one. Bagwell, a very aggressive hitter. He would just as soon have it middle in like most power hitters. And his hitting instructor Tom McCraw wonders how he can hit out of that crouch. So do I. Well, 43 home runs will tell you that it's easily done, especially when he drives in 135. Up and into him. Two balls and a strike. 
That's one of the reasons why he wears that padding on his left hand. Because when he steps toward the pitcher, you see that padded area, he steps toward the pitcher, he locks himself in, then has to move back away. The hands stay over the inside corner and he gets hit. Three and one now. So be careful here. Well, he really is getting confidence with that breaking ball, isn't he? Well, that, was, that one over a beautiful pitch. That was the little slider that he throws. And it frees, freezes a hitter on three and one, obviously. Got him with it again. <laughs> Seven strikeouts. This is almost unfair when you throw 97 98 and then you can throw the hook a knee bender and as you can see from the Southwest Airlines camera you can see the knees buckle and it snaps over the outside corner. There is a Southwest Airlines plane view camera high atop Wrigley Field and there's the K Club. You guys might need to head to a photocopy machine before this game's over. He's already struck out seven or a Kmart. <laughs> Do they sell those K's there? Sure. That's where they get all the big K's. No balls and a strike to Howell. It's even one and one. Wood strikeout high came against the Cardinals. He punched out nine Redbirds that game. Two and one now to Howell. Tell you, it looks to me like Sandy's got a brand new catcher's mitt, and as hard as Wood throws, I'll bet it takes him maybe two hitters to have that thing nice and broken in. Well, he better have a little extra padding in there. He's his hand's going to be about twice the size as the other. Strike three called, a laser beam on the outer half. He struck out eight. After three and a half, Kerry Wood ringing up the Astros and leading one to nothing. Kerry Wood was selected by the Cubs as the fourth overall selection in the 1995 draft. Before being called up to the majors, he made 55 minor league starts, compiling a 21 and 11 record with a 3.85 ERA with 340 strikeouts. Wood went on to post comparable numbers in his first season in the Bates, earning him Rookie of the Year honors. Robin Roberts breaks down Wood's inaugural season in his Minute Sports Center report from 1998. With strong start after strong start. Wood became a rock in the Cubs' playoff-bound rotation, prompting teammate Mark Grace to say, I worry about earthquakes and hurricanes. I don't worry about Kerry Wood. The 0-2. Strike three call. Good morning, good afternoon, good night. He finished the season with a 13-6 record and a 3.40 ERA. He was third in the National League in strikeouts with 233, and his 12.58 strikeouts per nine innings was the highest ever, higher than Randy Johnson's best and over a strikeout a game better than Nolan Ryan's best year. But it wasn't just the strikeouts. It was Wood and not Greg Maddox or Randy Johnson or Kevin Brown, who was the toughest pitcher in the National League to hit, holding opposing batters to a 196 average. If you were a scout evaluating his, him pitching, I think you would, uh, you would look at the quality of his stuff and it would be off the chart. While Sammy Sosa may have headlined the Cubs' resurgence, Wood is their future. After missing the stretch run with a shoulder injury, there was concern whether to pitch Wood again. But with the Cubs facing elimination, there he was, facing Greg Maddox in Game 3 of the Division Series. He went five innings and gave up one run, but just not quite enough. But it was clear from that special May day to his courageous October start, Kerry Wood, National League Rookie of the Year, made this season special too. Prior to Wood's 20 strikeout game, the most ever by a rookie had been 18 by Montreal's Bill Gullickson in 1980. Later, we'll flash back to the twin 20K performances of Roger Clemens. But now let's return to Kerry Wood's 20 strikeout game from 1998 on ESPN Classic. Jeff Blauser to lead things off for the Cubs here in the fourth. It's a 1-0 game. Houston with one single scratch hit. That by Gutierrez, the shortstop, back in the third. 
Ah, uh, you wonder if the controversy will begin, whether that should be a hit or an error in today's game. We will see as Kerry Wood takes the mound in the fifth. But first things first, here's Blauser against Reynolds, who has pitched equally brilliantly. He has struck out seven Cubs, and he's given up only two hits. Blauser has always had good numbers against Shane Reynolds. Let's see if he can lead off the fourth and put the Cubs in good shape for some insurance. Two balls, no strikes to Jeff. A ground out victim to third, his first trip to the dish. Hit hard and fair down the left field line. Blauser on his way to second. He had a hit last night, has a hit today. This one a stand-up double, and again the Astros throw the ball all over the ballpark. But no advance by Jeff, a leadoff double here in the fourth. Well, there's an example of not moving with the count. With the count 2-0, and oh, you got to figure that Blauser is going to try to pull the ball, and he pulls it right down the line past Jack Powell. And the Cubs in pretty good shape if Sandy can pull the ball. Second Cub extra base hit, and now Martinez the hitter. He walked his first time up. Blauser at second with nobody out. Milwaukee has scored twice in the eighth. They now lead the Padres two to one. As San Diego hits in the top of the ninth. And now time called by the Cup catcher. Showed bunt and took it outside. One ball, no strikes. Tom Gamboa flashing the signs outside that third base coaching box. Message received by Martinez, and now he's ready to go. They're in at the corners, expecting a bunt. He's swinging, smacks it into right field. Can Blouser tag? There's the catch, but no advance. Bell with a very strong throw into third. So Sandy hit the ball to the right side, but hit it too high in the air and to a man with a very good arm. And no advance by Blouser, and it costs the Cubs an out. Tony Gwynn just hit a solo home run for the Padres. It's 2 2 now in the ninth. Up in Milwaukee, and he hit it off Doug Jones. Doug Jones is starting to give up quite a few home runs, so guys are starting to wait back on that changeup. That's at least five in his last three appearances. Here's Kevin Ory. Kevin struck out his first time. And hits that one foul past third. How long does it take? An adjustment by a hitter to really take hold, Steve. I know Jeff Pentland talking to us before the game said he's tried to open Kevin up and keep his hands back and such. How long before you see substantial gains from him? Well, I think every hitter is completely different. It depends on how quickly he takes to it, how much batting practice he gets a chance to experience. When you're trying to learn a new style or adjust to a new style during the course of a big league game, it becomes a little more difficult. Hopefully Kevin can assimilate it quickly and put it into practice. But the pitching pattern has been the same every at bat for him. Inside, inside, inside. And then they do sweep that breaking ball away as you look at the teacher and pupil. And hopefully Kevin Ory can shake these early season doldrums. One ball, one strike. Inside corner, one and two. Cubs leading one to nothing. An unearned run in the second. I got a feeling you're going to see that split finger right here. That's how he got him in the second inning after setting him up inside. One and two. The Reynolds pitch. 
Strike three called outside corner. So there are two men out now. And Ori is 0 for 2 with two strikeouts. Gary Wood has a chance to help himself. And at times he swung the bat pretty well. This is a good pitch on the outside corner. And after a steady diet of inside pitches, that outside corner looks a little bit further away. And right now, Kevin Ori just looks confused. Reynolds strikeout high was 12. He's done that three times. Did it in 1996 against the Cardinals. He already has eight in today's game, and we're only in the fourth. Both pitchers with eight. The termites have invaded the bat racks for both ball clubs. And the pitchers have been superb. San Diego, by the way, has him first and third with one out now. Trying to take the lead in Milwaukee. Nothing in one to carry, whose first big league hit scored a run. But this time he'll be denied. Good play by Bagwell. The pitcher covers, and that retires the side. Cubs get a leadoff double, can't advance him. And after four complete, it's still a one to nothing Chicago game. You're watching National League Rookie of the Year, Kerry Wood, and his record setting 20 strikeout performance from 1998 on ESPN. One nothing score after four. Welcome back to Wrigley Field, Chip Carey and Steve Stone. If you don't like strikeouts, you probably don't like this game. 16 by both pitchers through four innings. Well, not a lot of contact. You can understand it with Carey Wood throwing rockets down there. And Shane Reynolds has matched him pitch for pitch. Just an error. The difference in this one, the run unearned, the Cubs will take it. And right now, Carey has things well in hand. Just one hit, and that could have gone either way. We'll see if they change that scoring as the afternoon continues. That's the only blemish for Wood today. Well, right now, Kerry Wood isn't thinking about anything but the next man that he faces. And today, he's getting everything over the plate. And so that's a refreshing change from some of his earlier performances. Moise Salu, the first man he faces here in the fifth. Alou struck out swinging his first time and falls behind again. Boy, what a delight it is to see this kid with such great stuff getting ahead more frequently in the count with this powerful Astro team now it's nothing in two no question about it he is starting to feel much more comfortable the 0 2 strike three call good morning good afternoon good night nine strikeouts ties his career high. Well, Jerry Meals is calling a fairly generous corner, but he's done it on both sides of the plate for both teams. And you just have to go out there and get it. That's a pretty good pitch. And if you're not going to pull the trigger, you're going to get rung up. So see you later. Seven straight retired by Wood. And right, now here's Clark, who fly to center his first time. You've got to watch Clark. He's a veteran, dead fastball hitter. So he's going to start him out with a hook and take his chances. And he gets ahead, nothing in one. Well, this doesn't look at all like the guy who struggled so badly out in Los Angeles against the Dodgers. I mean, Kerry Woods pitching not like a 20-year-old, but like a 20-year veteran today. I think Dave Clark thought that ball was high. Jerry Meal says it was just high enough to be a strike. Pally, get back in there. The 0-2. Strike three called another breaking ball. Ten strikeouts for Wood. First time in his career he's reached double digits. Well, that curveball, it's spinning so quickly you can probably hear it. Whoa. Catching it below the waist, and no doubt about it, you saw it came in just about waist high, and Dave Clark, well, his hands aren't stinging because he never took the bat off his shoulder. Well, here's the only man that's hit him so far. It's Ricky Gutierrez. And some might wonder whether it was a clean hit or not. He singled back in the third, leading things off for the Astros. One and one. You can take a look at the way Sandy Martinez gets as low a target as he possibly can get. Fastball away. That's where he got it, one and two. Well, I'd have to go back to that real good curveball here. Gutierrez, pretty good fastball hitter. 
Most strikeouts by a rookie pitcher, Dick Trout and Bert Hooten, 15 for the Cubs. The mistake Wood made to Gutierrez was a breaking ball, if I remember correctly, yeah. that was up a little bit. He got it on the inner portion of the plate, didn't break real well. Didn't look anything like the curve balls to Dave Clark. And here comes the slider. Let's see. Two and two. On official scores, nightmare kind of game so far today. Only one hit surrendered by Wood. He has struck out the last four men he's faced. Make it five in a row. And 11 in the game. Three up, three down in the fifth. It's still one to nothing. He's amazing. You're watching National League Rookie of the Year, Kerry Wood, and his record-setting 20-strikeout performance from 1998 on ESPN+. Well, it's been said of a very close friend of mine, the lights are on and no one's home. At least that's the case for the Astros today. Kerry Wood has struck out 11 of the Houstons today. And he gets ahead of the number eight hitter, Brad Osmus. Kevin Wood has Ory. retired nine in a row. Kevin Ory in close to third, and it's a good idea because Osmus will occasionally bunt. Way high with a fastball. One ball, one strike. Well, Osmus has pretty good speed. If he does hit it, it's going to right or right center. One and two. The Brewers have beaten the Padres. Mark Loretta with an RBI double in the ninth off Carlos Reyes wins it three to two over San Diego. All the runs came in the eighth and ninth in that game. And now the count two and two. Well, the outside corner is generous. Throw the heat on the outside corner and you will fan number 12 and sixth in a row. And he's going out there with the fastball. The 2-2. Two -two. To the second baseman. Mickey two and E. One out. That's the hardest hit ball the Astros have had today. But Carey is still retired ten in a row. the pitcher Shane Reynolds Reynolds a sacrifice his first time up what's frightening if you're the opposition Kerry hasn't walked anybody today and normally that's the only time when you can get to this kid Ugh. and it's not as if he's lost any heat off the gas so far Brad Osmus opens up the sixth inning by grounding out to Mickey Morandini. Kerry Woods retired 10 men in succession. And now the Astro pitcher behind no balls, two strikes. See you later. 12 strikeouts and two outs in the Houston sixth. Well, Shane Reynolds says, I still have to pitch. There's no reason to hurt my hands on a swing. So you can see 12 right across the board. Many of them caught looking. Yeah, we have to check those guys out and see if they got him in order. It's seven and five. Seven called strikeouts, five swinging. So two up, two down. He's retired 11 in a row. Craig Biggio, the Astro hitter. Every member of the Astros has struck out at least once today. Biggio. Open the game, striking out swinging. A one hitter so far for Wood. He's in the sixth. Oh. <laughs> That's just not fair. Nothing in one. Biggio just wanted a bit of a timeout as he turned to Jerry Meals. He loosened up all the vertebrae on that <laughs> cut. Yeah, he did. I think the best pitch Wood made today was the first pitch of the game. The one that knocked the mask off the umpire. You could see Biggio turn around and look as he fouls that one away as if to say I don't really think I saw that pitch. I think he might have hurt himself on that first swing. He's still loosening up and he's taking some very defensive swings against Kerry Wood. You never see Craig Biggio doing that. He needs a new star on that helmet. Too much pine tar is taking the decal off. The 0 2. One ball, two strikes. 
Kerry Wood has struck out 12 Astros into the sixth inning. Vigio still trying to loosen himself up. It's a man with the second longest consecutive game streak played behind Cal Ripken. Oh, that hit him in the back of the helmet. Let's see if he's all right. And we told you when this game started that Biggio would probably get hit today with a curveball, but we thought that he would lean into it. This time he's fortunate to get hit on that padded elbow. So he's going to be all right. Yeah, I thought it was the elbow or the back of the helmet, I beg your pardon, when it hit him because it made that funny plasticky sound, but it was the elbow guard that he got. Right, it's that plastic elbow guard, and that's why he wears it. Now this one he didn't lean into. He kind of leans away from it and gets that elbow up to protect his head. And now you have to watch the stolen base. So Sandy Martinez for the first time put to the test with BGO at first. And he's stolen 14 bases, been caught twice. Active leaders hit by pitches and Craig BGO right there at the top. So he's aboard with two outs. And Bell the batter. He is struck out and he's flied out. He's not going the first time and that pitch popped up in play Mark Grace says he's got it he's in foul ground he does have it signed retired no runs no hits one man left after five and a half it's still a one nothing cup game. For more information on our classic games trivia the upcoming specials and the ESPN classic program schedule go to ESPN.com keyword classic. Kerry Woods 20 strikeout performance was just one of several memorable baseball moments to take place on May 6th. On that date in 1915 Boston pitcher Babe Ruth hit his first major league home run. After only 18 major league at bats the Bambino took Yankees hurler Jack Warhop deep at the polo grounds. On his way to becoming the most feared hitter of all time Ruth played first base and batted six for Boston on this date in 1918. It marked the first time that he played a position other than pitcher. And in 1982, 43-year-old Gaylord Perry notched his 300th career victory in a 7-3 win over the Yankees, making him the 15th player to reach that plateau. Perry Woods' 20 strikeouts set the National League record for a nine-inning game. The previous record of 19 was held by Steve Carlton, Tom Seaver, and David Cohn. Wood had to share the major league mark set by one of his heroes, Roger Clemens, who fanned 20 not once, but twice. As a member of the Red Sox, Clemens first accomplished the feat on April 29, 1986 at Fenway Park against Seattle. A decade later, Clemens repeated the feat in Detroit, sitting down 20 at Tiger Stadium on September 18, 1996. Did you know that the major league record for an extra inning game is 21? Tom Chaney of the Senators turned the trick against Baltimore in 16 innings in September of 1962. Now let's head back to Kerry Woods' 20 strikeout performance 36 years later from 1998 on ESPN Classic. The rain's starting to fall a little harder now as Jeff Bagwell stands in against Kerry Wood. Bagwell 0 for 2 with a couple of strikeouts. We asked Tom McCraw about his hitting slump earlier today. He's been my most complicated uh, situation that I've had since I've been a hitting instructor. I still haven't figured out his batting stance. I know he has good mental discipline, uh, but even though he's struggling, he's still making contributions. He's getting the walks for us. He'll get a base hit every now and then, and he's still basing. So even though he's not hitting the long ball, uh, he's got 15, 16 RBIs, which isn't bad, but for Bagwell standards, it's not as good as we know that he's going to do. So I have the luxury maybe of realizing that Jeff has a tremendous track record, and at the end of the season, he'll have his numbers will all be in place. Two and two to him, however. Got to shut down the Astros this inning because the rains are coming, and they are going to be heavy. Ooh, that just missed. Three and two. Hasn't walked anybody so far. You don't want to start with Bagwell to lead off the inning. He's got good speed. Got it. Thirteen strikeouts. Well, it looked like Bagwell swung at ball four. That was a fastball up. It looked out of the strike zone, but you don't have much chance to decide with young Kerry Wood. Look at those gaudy numbers. One hit. No walks, 13 strikeouts. Hello, right by him. 
Swung late as they've done all day. Howell is 0 for 2. He has struck out twice. And this kid doesn't look like he is slowing down a bit. He's still bringing the ball in the upper 90s. That one slipped. And that's what you have to worry about with the soggy conditions. Now it's 3 and 0. Oh. I would give Howell two take signs because Carey's starting to get that fastball up and out of the zone and Howell hasn't done anything with it. Three and one. He went around. Three and two. That's why I said I'd give him two take signs, but Howell did swing at that. And that could wind up to really hurt the Astros. This fastball up and out of the zone, and Howell doesn't check his swing. Three balls, two strikes. 14. Once you swung at the 3 1 pitch, the 3 2 pitch just unhittable upstairs, and Howell takes a seat as so many before him have. So two up, two down. Here's Alou. And factor in the bad weather, it's tough to hit through the raindrops. Strike one. Let's pause a moment for station identification. This is America's number one sports station, WGN, Chicago. Thunder rumbling overhead, and Alou lost the handle on the bat. He's down two strikes. This is the 95th pitch of the game for Kerry Wood. He has struck out 14 Astros. He's given up only one hit. One ball, two strikes. Did he go? Yes, he did. He strikes out the side again. He's punched out 15. As we go to the seventh inning stretch. You're watching National League Rookie of the Year, Kerry Wood, and his record-setting 20 strikeout performance from 1998. ESPN Plus. One to nothing our score as we head to the eighth inning. The Cubs make a defensive substitution. Jose Hernandez takes over in left field for the Cubs. But the story of this afternoon is the man on that mound, Kerry Wood. We certainly do. And with 15 strikeouts, you can understand why they're excited about this young man. He has struck out 15 Astros today. Clark Gutierrez and Osmus, the next three to face him. And as we have a moment, let's take a look, Steve, at today's Ameritech play that makes a difference. The only hit of the game, Ricky Gutierrez gets a breaking ball that hangs on the inner portion. He waits, takes it to the left side, and this is a base hit. As you can see, Kevin Ory just barely gets a tip of the glove on it. And although there'll be some controversy, folks, that's a hit. It was a good scoring call, and that's the only hit of the day. So Kerry Wood with 15 strikeouts. In case you wondered, the all-time Cub record for strikeouts in a game is 17. Way back May 30th, 1906, against St. Louis. Jack Feister, the man that did it, it was a 15-inning game. Arnie Harris told us that Feister had very good control that day and was able to snap that breaking ball over the outside corner at will. How are the ratings for that game? Well, no television, but a lot of good radio calls simulated. 
Two balls, no strikes. I'm a little worried right now with the mound conditions the way they are. And Kerry Wood starting to get a few pitches up as he did last inning. You kind of worry about his control. It is a one to nothing game. Wood has not walked a, ha a batter in the ball game. He's given up one single and he's hit Craig Biggio. And Clark taking his time wants that mound to get just as soggy as it can be. A lot of gamesmanship right now. Bob Scanlon up in the bullpen. He's throwing. Threw it right by him, two and one. There's a look at the former Cub, Bob Scanlon. They don't have many right-handers down there. They do have four left-handers, however. Doug Henry and Bob Scanlon, the two right-handers. Two balls, one strike. It's three and one. Gutierrez, the lone man to single off Wood, is on deck. The 3-1 to Clark. 3-2. and two. Again, you don't have much time to decide, but that was ball four. It was low and out of the zone. And now if you throw that high fastball, you're probably going to throw it right by Dave Clark. The crowd will tell you the story. It was a high pitch and he just did get a piece. Wood threw 104 pitches in seven innings against the Cardinals last time out. He's thrown 102 and he's in the eighth here today and he struck out 15 men. He hasn't walked a single batter. And it's not like there's a whole lot off that fastball. Number 16, a rookie record for the Cubs. Dick Grott and Bert Hooten had 15. And this season, he is atop the leaderboard in K's. 16 strikeouts. And look at this pitch. He pulls the string, and Dave Clark has no chance. He struck out four in a row again. He struck out five in a row twice in this game. He has 16 punch outs and another strike to Gutierrez. This is amazing. A little squibber foul. He's got him set up two strikes again. Bill Regan telling Tom Gambo, you see, I worked with this young man. We tightened <laughs> yeah. up the curveball, got him thrown a little bit harder, and look, this is the result. The 0 2. Got him. He's tied the record. Well, Larry Durker is on the phone to the Cub bullpen telling him to get up back. <laughs> That's right. And he just fires a fastball right on the corner, right by Ricky Gutierrez. 17 strikeouts. And now Brad Osmus, the hitter. Wood has tied the team record for strikeouts in a game. It's a 92 year old record. Well, I am hoping that the rain does not stop this one short of the ninth inning. As this young man could set the all time record. He's one strike away. How about swinging at a curveball that lands two feet in front of home plate? You think they're seeing the ball real well? He's threatening to strike out the side for the fourth time in the game. It's still one to nothing. 
You're watching National League Rookie of the Year, Kerry Wood, and his record-setting 20-strikeout performance from 1998 on ESPN+. Well, a record-setting performance so far for Kerry Wood. He has struck out a franchise record 18 men today. And he's within striking distance of the all-time major league record in strikeouts. Well, this being his fifth start, you can understand where he saved his best for number five. <laughs> yeah. Man, oh man, unbelievable. Has been Kerry Wood. But first things first, today the Cubs want to welcome the Partners in Education tutoring program of the Fourth Presbyterian Church to Wrigley Field, courtesy of Halo Industries. And folks, you have seen one of the best pitching performances in baseball history today, and certainly in franchise history as well. The rain is still falling here at the ballpark. Mickey Morandini will lead things off here in the eighth. It's still a one nothing game. Not only has Wood struck out 18, he's given up only one hit. And Morandini 0 for 3 on the day takes a ball 1 and 0. In the ninth, it'll be a pinch hitter for Reynolds and back to the top with Biggio and Bell. One and one. What a day for Kerry Wood. He's had everything in the strike zone and everything breaking sharply. And these Houston hitters haven't had a sniff. Morandini line drive into right field for a base hit. That's the seventh Cub hit. And a little insurance would be nice. Only one hit for the Astros. And I wonder what what that Astro manager Larry Durker is thinking about Kerry Wood. We were talking to him yesterday. He got his summons to the big leagues when he was 18. He said he didn't have much control difficulty. Well he's seeing a 20 year old not have any of that today either. Here's Sosa. He's got a hit today. That extends his hitting streak to 13 games. Well, in Larry's first full season, he was 7 and 8. He had 109 strikeouts in 147 and two thirds innings, and he started 19 games. This young man will fly by those numbers. An unearned run, the difference in this game. So, so a little pop into right. Bell will battle the water and he'll make the grab and there's out number one in the eighth. You can't take anything away from Shane Reynolds. He's been brilliant today. Limiting the Cubs just one unearned run but sometimes you pick the wrong day to pitch. And that's been the case so far against young Kerry Wood. So Roger Clemens holds the all time major league record. He struck out 20. I think he did it once to the Mariners and once to the Tigers. The National League record is 19. So Kerry Wood, if he could retire, all three Astros on strikes would set the Major League record today at Wrigley Field. Was it Carlton and Seaver both had 19? I know Carlton did. I think I think you're right. And Carlton might have lost that game in which he fanned 19. Roger Clemens did it in 86 and 96. That ball hammered into the Astro bullpen and foul. 0 and 1 to Mark Grace as Mickey Morandini breaking on the play. I like to see the hit and run in this scenario, trying to keep the inning alive. Jose Hernandez in the on deck circle. He came on to take over left field defensively for Henry Rodriguez. The rain starting to. Lighten up here. One on, one out. Cubs leading one to nothing here in the bottom half of the eighth. Kerry Wood, the story. The pitch. Evens the count. Well, I wonder what the folks around Major League Baseball watching the game on WGN today are thinking about Kerry Wood's performance. I think there's a lot of people going to be asking the Astros, what did Kerry Wood look like? Well, we didn't see much That's of him, so we can't right. tell you. But he sounded pretty good. Two and one to Grace. I guess Kerry's next outing will be against the Diamondbacks. 
That'll be in Arizona. I'm sure they're looking forward to that. And then he'll get the Reds on Saturday, the 16th in Cincinnati. Two balls and a strike. Ripped into right. Will it drop? It will. Mickey very gingerly scampers around second, and he stands at third. First and third, one out. Grace, another two-hit game. Kerry Wood sitting there contemplating what his ninth inning is going to look like, and it will be a lot more comfortable for him if the Cubs can push one across. And that's in the hands of Jose Hernandez. Well, folks, I've had the good pleasure of watching Randy Johnson pitch for the Seattle Mariners for a couple of years, and I've seen him flirt with perfect games with no hitters, with 14, 15, 16 strikeout games, and this young man at the age of 20 doesn't give much away to the big unit. He has been absolutely magnificent today. Jose Hernandez, who took over defensively an inning or so ago, is the Cub batter. He's behind nothing and one. Jose hit a home run last night to put the Cubs on top briefly, four to three. Doesn't need a home run here. This has to stay out of the double play. One ball, one strike. And again, lost in this day has been the pitching of Shane Reynolds. He has been absolutely fantastic, too. He has struck out 10 Cubs. He's scattered eight Chicago hits. An unearned run on the Dave Clark error in left field. Moved a runner up 90 feet, and the Cubs got a sack fly RBI out of it. That's been all the scoring today. One ball, two strikes. A one to nothing nail biter at Wrigley Field. One and two. Hit toward third. They'll try to turn two. How took forever. Jose beats the rat. It took him a long time to make that throw, didn't it? Well, the Cubs get a run, and Jack Howell looked like all he needed was a force out at second. You got to realize that sometimes you have to hurry up this play and watch Howell from the left field camera. It takes a long time getting it over there and no chance to get Hernandez who drives in a run and a big one as Jose drives in his 10th and gives the Cubs some breathing room. So he stands at first with two outs. Jeff Blauser a two hit day today comes leading two to nothing in the bottom of the eighth. One ball, no strikes. Jeff a double offensively in the fourth inning, the highlight of his at bats on the afternoon. The Cubs trying to get a game back from the first place Astros. Trying to go to four and two on the homestand. And will await the Giants for the first to four tomorrow night. Houston will have another off day, and then they head to Milwaukee for three. Brewers won in the bottom of the ninth today, three to two over the Padres. 1-0. One, oh. one and one. Didn't mean to swing. It's a foul ball in front of the plate. One ball, two strikes to the Cubs shortstop, Jeff Blauser. And Brad Osmus makes a friend by tossing the foul ball into the first row of seats. <laughs> Kerry Wood awaiting the top of the ninth. He's got a two run cushion. And for a young man on the mound with everything going for him you can't wait to get out there. Ooh. He wants this inning to end. He feels with two runs he's got enough. One and two. Runner goes. The Osmonds throw to second is a laser beam. And Jose is retired, and that retires the Cubs in the eighth. But a big, big insurance run on two hits. Nobody left. We go to the ninth, and Kerry Wood seeks the record after this timeout. 
You're watching National League Rookie of the Year, Kerry Wood, and his record-setting 20-strikeout performance from 1998 on ESPN+. We go to the ninth inning. The man of the afternoon, Kerry Wood, has already set the Cubs' all-time record for single-game strikeouts with 18. The National League record, 19. The Major League record, 20. And it's the most strikeout since David Cohn punched out 19 in 91. Rod and Beck. Just in case, Rod Beck getting ready. And Bill Gullickson, as a rookie fan, 18 Chicago Cubs back in 1980 while a member of the Montreal Expos. So one more strikeout, and Kerry Wood will have that. He faces Bill Spires. First pitch. Fouled away, and again, look how late he was. It's 0-1. Spires hitting 242. 0 for 6 is a pinch hitter. And he started the ball game last night. Had a key double in the seventh inning. Spires ready to deal one. Line foul out of play, 0-2. Jack Brickhouse just called Ernie Harris, said it's the best game that he's seen since Bob Henley pitched a one-hitter for the Cubs against the Dodgers, but Sandy Koufax pitched a no-hitter for the Dodgers against the Cubs. One ball, two strikes. I don't know about you, but I got goosebumps watching this thing. I think if he throws him a hook, especially the kind that he threw to Dave Clark, that'll be number 19. And Sandy Martinez, who's done a great job behind the plate, says, give me the hook, kid. Let's see it. He tomahawked that one toward the Astro dugout. One and two the count. And a lot has to be said for Sandy Martinez because it's not like Kerry Wood has shaken him off a great deal. Kerry Wood has shaken him off a few times, not many. And Sandy's done a great job pumping his fist saying, let's go get him. Come on, kid. One more strike to go. The pitch. Odd foul. Look out, Mr. Santo. There goes another window. <laughs> My car is next to run, so follow it over the other side. One ball, two strikes to Spires. Fans on their feet oh. all over the ballpark. They're seeing something special here today. Got it! He ties the National League record. Mr. Brickhouse, what do you think of this young man? Well, Give us a call. And that was a floating slider that came well inside the Spires, and he just swung over the top. Watch it again as Billy Spires comes up empty, and he's number 19. And to the top of the order we go, and Craig Biggio. Wood has struck out seven straight men. He goes for number 20 right here. One ball, no strikes. Give the umpire Jerry Meals credit, too. He has had a very consistent strike zone for both pitchers today. 19 and counting for Wood. To the shortstop. Two down. He's got a chance to tie Clemens, though, if he can retire Bell. And the fans boo Craig Biggio for making contact. <laughs> One lone hit. That coming to lead off the third inning by Ricky Gutierrez. And there is the major league wreckout. Roger Clemens. The record to 20 strikeouts. He got Bell in the first. And the adrenaline still pumping very, very hard for Wood. He is throwing still in the upper 90s. I guess he needs some more seasoning. Obviously, they called him up well too early, especially yeah. for the Astros. 1 0 to Bell. Oh. Nasty 1 and 1. Well, a collage of these strikeouts would take up most of Sports Center. Get ready to see it again. One and two. 
Well, one more curveball, and that should be about it because Derek Bell isn't even coming close. Come on, number 20. enough to have witnessed this on WGN have seen something you might not see again anytime soon. 20 strikeouts by the rookie Kerry Wood. He ties Roger Clemens for the all-time Major League record and he makes it in his fifth Major League start. Unbelievable. And we're going to hear from Kerry Wood so don't go away. There'll be a lot of people that want to talk to him we're going to get a chance to speak to him and I'll tell you something that performance was just absolutely overwhelming Kerry congratulations what a ball game today thank you very much now, obviously you felt great <laughs> tell us about the adrenaline in that ninth inning um, it's still going on I really can't <laughs> I, I just I'm I'm uh, I'm uh, I'm out of words I don't have anything to say Kerry just... in the bullpen before the game when you were warming up did you feel anything special did you have any idea that you would be able to have a day today where everything you had was over the plate and working perfectly no I, to tell you the truth I I didn't have a very good uh, warm-up today and uh, you know I was just trying to go out and get out and uh, it was just one of those days well, it was one of those days that's in the record books, and I'm sure your folks were watching. This was an unbelievable performance. And did it help the fact that every pitch was like the World Series because you only had a one-run lead, and that came early in the ball game? I tell you what, uh, I'm going to give most of credit to the fans. They were in it, they were in it the whole game, and uh, every time I got two strikes, they were on their feet. And uh, you know, you, you can't ask for anything more than that. My adrenaline was uh, was racing. How about the job behind the plate by Sandy today? You guys seem to be locked in together from the first pitch. I'll tell you what, Sandy did a great job today. Uh, I think I only shook twice, and uh, I think he put the same sign back down. So I threw everything he wanted, and uh, we were pretty much on the same page all day. Well, Kerry, you found a way to shut down the Astros running game. You just didn't let them get on base. <laughs> uh, you know, Sa Sandy's got a great arm back there. He's going he's gonna to stop guys from running when they do get on base. Were you counting along with the fans? Did you know how many men you had struck out and that you were chasing the major league record that you tied today? No, I, I, I couldn't even tell you how many I had. Well, you had 20. Did they give you the baseball at least? No, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> make not sure yet. you make sure you get that, young man, because that's one for the mantelpiece. All right. And I'm sure they're going to fine you the kangaroo court for doing so well and only your fifth start. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure you'll take I'm, it. I'm getting fined somehow. I'm sure. <laughs> well, great job, kid. Congratulations. Thank and you. Hopefully many, many more performances like that. Thank you. Wood struck out the side in the first, fifth, seventh, and eighth innings, while batting two each in the second, fourth, and ninth. Afterwards, the rookie hurler seemed unfazed by his accomplishment. I couldn't imagine ever doing this, to tell you the truth. I, you know, I just try to go out and, and get outs and, uh, and get a win. I, I'm, more, I'm more thrilled that we won the game today. You know, it was a close one, and, and we pulled it out. The strikeouts today were, on, were mo mo mainly on uh, sliders. Uh, I threw the curveballs earlier in the count and to lefties, and, uh, you know, I was, getting, I was getting all three pitches over, and occasionally I threw a few change-ups and got those over. So it was just one of those days where everything, everything he throws, uh, you know, crossing the plate. Wood's performance was the jump start Chicago needed. After that win, the Cubs went 21-9, putting them in the hunt for a playoff spot. Wood continued to impress, but an injured right elbow sidelined him for the last month of the regular season. Led by Sammy Sosa's 66 homers and 158 RBI, the Cubs still managed to force a one-game playoff with San Francisco for the National League wild card. Steve Traxel took a no-hitter into the sixth inning, and powered by Gary Gaetti's two-run homer, the Cubs beat the Giants 5-3 to earn their first trip to the postseason since 1989. The Cubbies' memorable 98 season that came to an abrupt end as the Braves swept Chicago in three games. Not even one, who hadn't pitched for a month, could help the Cubs in the series finale. The 
Rookie of the Year was outdueled by Greg Maddox in the 6-2 loss. We certainly hope you enjoyed this presentation of Kerry Woods' 20 strikeout performance against the Astros from 1998. I'm Mike Gleason. Thanks for watching ESPN Classic.